You're about to listen to part three of a three-part series about what the Lord has shown us about the end times that I recorded with my good friend, Ray Bergman. Just in the time since we recorded that, so many things are happening around the world. Um, I don't even know where to start with them. I, Ray and I both are getting an increasing urgency to get the word out to people. We both feel in our spirits that our time to get that out is very limited, to get out you know, more messages to you and more prophetic words and things like that. And I was in my prayer time this morning. This is Thursday, January 20th, 2022. And uh, something very interesting happened. I want to read to you all this word that I got um, because I think it's very important. It's going to be up on the blog, on the JPH blog tomorrow. It's called Close Your Ears. I was in my early morning prayer time in the wee hours of the morning when I was shown that in the time we are entering, one of the really large media outlets will ridicule Jesus, the cross, meaning his death on the cross, and the Bible. I was shown that not terribly long after that, God is going to destroy that media outlet because they ridiculed Jesus' death on the cross. I was also shown that all of the people who engage what, you know, when they are ridiculing Jesus and the cross and his death and the word of God, if you engage with that, uh, him being ridiculed and the word of God being ridiculed and all of that by listening to that on the news or on documentaries or whatever happens to come out at that time, because I don't think this is real far off, then you're loosing judgment in your own life. Uh, what I was shown is because that's the spirit of antichrist. And so if you're engaging with the spirit of Satan, you know, that's against God, then uh, you're not going to be protected from destruction. It's going to come in like that. So I want to tell you all what he um, showed me. He showed me, that the people who engage with that will be recompensed for that behavior with disasters like plagues, accidents, severe illness, or severe financial lack, um, or severe financial loss. And whenever destruction hits your life, this is a word for somebody, whenever, okay. The Lord says there's somebody that's listening to this, that you have children and you think whatever you do is fine. That's just on you. It's not just on you. The Lord said to let you know, That if you open the door to the enemy with this kind of behavior, they will also be affected. And nobody wants that if they love their kids. But he just gave me that. Okay. So the spirit of Antichrist, we already know that's running rampant. But if it is on the news, ridiculing God, ridiculing Jesus' death on the cross, or ridiculing the word of God, there should be a click of you turning off your remote and changing the channel or not listening to that. Because unless you plan to spend your eternity with the devil, that's not where you want to engage. Okay, can I just say that? And he said in this word, it's a real short word. He, he showed me that. And then he said, my people, in your time, you must close your eyes and ears to all that are against me. For your adversary, the devil has put clever arguments into their minds. And they see dissuading you, which means keep pulling you back from your faith as entertainment. Getting you to stop believing is their entertainment is what he's saying. And, and making fun of everything about God. See, that's their, it's a sport to them. The consequences will be very severe for those who entertain this folly. So I just want to encourage y'all to not engage with that. If you see what, when I used to watch television, I don't watch now because the Lord asked me to stop last year. When you see something on television, you should, that is wrong like that, wrong and against God, you should immediately click and change the channel or turn the whole thing off. We are not to be interested in or listening to things like that, okay? So I just want to let you know, because I don't want to see bad stuff happen to y'all. I don't want y'all to suffer financial disasters and get plagues and stuff like that. We're we're trying to warn you about different behaviors that if you do them, it's going to bring bad things into your life. Because you can't cry to God that you, you know, a disaster hits your life. If you were sitting there agreeing with the media or being in agreement with it while it's, you know, doing its whole antichrist thing then how are you going to run to God and go, well, why did this happen to me? Because you'll just get silence. Because what happened was you opened the door to his enemy, your enemy, and let it in. And when disaster comes to your house, if you have children, your children are also vulnerable to attacks, to bad things happening too. Please hear me on this. This is important, y'all. We can pray and cover our children all we want in prayers, but if our behavior brings in a judgment like that, it's going to affect them too. So I'm just saying. 
I hope y'all enjoy the part three of the series, and I hope that you learned a whole lot from it. We did spend a lot of time working on it, a lot of time. Y'all have a blessed week. You're about to listen to part three of a three-part series about what the Lord has shown us about the end times that I recorded with my good friend, Ray Bergman. Just in the time since we recorded that, so many things are happening around the world. Um, I don't even know where to start with them. I, Ray and I both are getting an increasing urgency to get the word out to people. We both feel in our spirits that our time to get that out is very limited, to get out you know, more messages to you and more prophetic words and things like that. And I was in my prayer time this morning. This is Thursday, January 20th, 2022. And uh, something very interesting happened. I want to read to you all this word that I got um, because I think it's very important. It's going to be up on the blog, on the JPH blog tomorrow. It's called Close Your Ears. I was in my early morning prayer time in the wee hours of the morning when I was shown that in the time we are entering, one of the really large media outlets will ridicule Jesus, the cross, meaning his death on the cross, and the Bible. I was shown that not terribly long after that, God is going to destroy that media outlet because they ridiculed Jesus's death on the cross. I was also shown that all of the people who engage what, you know, when they are ridiculing Jesus and the cross and his death and the word of God, if you engage with that, uh, him being ridiculed and the word of God being ridiculed and all of that by listening to that on the news or on documentaries or whatever happens to come out at that time, because I don't think this is real far off, then you're loosing judgment in your own life. Uh, What I was shown is because that's the spirit of antichrist. And so if you're engaging with the spirit of Satan, you know, that's against God, then uh, you're not going to be protected from destruction. It's going to come in like that. So I want to tell you all what he um, showed me. He showed me, that the people who engage with that will be recompensed for that behavior with disasters like plagues, accidents, severe illness, or severe financial lack, um, or severe financial loss. And whenever destruction hits your life, this is a word for somebody, whenever, okay. The Lord says there's somebody that's listening to this, that you have children and you think whatever you do is fine. That's just on you. It's not just on you. The Lord said to let you know, that if you open the door to the enemy with this kind of behavior, they will also be affected. And nobody wants that if they love their kids. But he just gave me that. Okay. So the spirit of Antichrist, we already know that's running rampant. But if it is on the news, ridiculing God, ridiculing Jesus' death on the cross, or ridiculing the word of God, there should be a click of you turning off your remote and changing the channel or not listening to that. Because unless you plan to spend your eternity with the devil, that's not where you want to engage. Okay, can I just say that? And he said in this word, it's a real short word. He, he showed me that. And then he said, my people, in your time, you must close your eyes and ears to all that are against me. For your adversary, the devil has put clever arguments into their minds. And they see dissuading you, which means keep pulling you back from your faith as entertainment. Getting you to stop believing is their entertainment. Is what he's saying. And, and making fun of everything about God. See, that's their, it's a sport to them. The consequences will be very severe for those who entertain this folly. So I just want to encourage y'all to not engage with that. If you see what, when I used to watch television, I don't watch now because the Lord asked me to stop last year. When you see something on television, you should, that is wrong like that, wrong and against God, you should immediately click and change the channel or turn the whole thing off. We are not to be interested in or listening to things like that, okay? So I just want to let you know, because I don't want to see bad stuff happen to y'all. I don't want y'all to suffer financial disasters and get plagues and stuff like that. We're, we're trying to warn you about different behaviors that if you do them, it's going to bring bad things into your life. Because you can't cry to God that you you know a disaster hits your life if you were sitting there agreeing with the media or being in agreement with it while it's you know doing its whole antichrist thing then how are you going to run to God and go, well, why did this happen to me? Because you'll just get silence. Because what happened was you opened the door to his enemy, your enemy, and let it in. And when disaster comes to your house, if you have children, your children are also vulnerable to attacks, to bad things happening to 
Please hear me on this. This is important, y'all. We can pray and cover our children all we want in prayers, but if our behavior brings in a judgment like that, it's going to affect them too. So I'm just saying. I hope y'all enjoy the part three of the series, and I hope that you learned a whole lot from it. We did spend a lot of time working on it. A lot of time. Y'all have a blessed week. Thank you so much for joining me today on Just Praise Him Radio. I'm your host, Linda Lomax, and my job is to inspire you to a closer walk with Christ. Now here's the show. Hello, believers. Welcome to the Just Praise Him radio program. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and the title of my message today is What the Lord Has Told Us About These End Times. This podcast is part three of this teaching. I have my very good friend Ray Bergman of Innocence Redeemed with me today. Thank you for taking the time to be on JPH Radio, Ray. Thank you, Glenda. It's good to be back again. In part three, and as has been in the last two episodes, are words, dreams, and visions that all have one thing in common. The time is running out, and the end is fast approaching. We are very concerned about the scores of people who do not realize how close the end is, and all those who are ridiculing these types of messages. On November 14, 2019, the Lord gave us a word about what's coming for America called To Her Knees. My children, I have told you you live in a time unlike any before it. The cup of iniquity of many nations is growing full. I will bring America to her knees in this time. Everything that made her great, all the blessings I bestowed that she has so quickly forgotten, I will take away. My people that are left in the earth in this time, and he means the time when he brings America to her knees, pay attention. You are being refined. If you resist my refining, it will become more difficult for you. And he means the circumstances at that time. And you will suffer more. My people who are in America during the time of my judgments will suffer greatly. My people who are ready to come home to me, I will begin bringing you home one by one. Evil is about to be unleashed upon the earth as never before. Can I just say that I do not want to be here for any of that? I want to get my refining over with now. Amen. I'm in agreement with you there. And, you know, all everything that you just mentioned, we're already seeing, you know, that happening. And, you know, another way you know it's close is because the refinings have become more and more intense. Yeah, and refining becomes more intense if what's up ahead is going to be harder. He told me once that uh, how hard he had to be on a person when he was refining them was in direct relation to what they were being prepared for. Notice, too, that he said evil would cover the earth, not just America, but the whole earth. The reason, of course, is because this is the time of the end. I want to read you a word from November 21st, 2019, called the Tribulation. My children, I have told you it is all beginning. All that is written in my holy word is about to be fulfilled. The Tribulation will come upon you quickly. You will be preoccupied with other things. And he said there will be much going on around you, and it will suddenly be there. Much hardship abounds in this time. In the Tribulation, nothing will be as it was. My people will be persecuted as never before. Many shall be killed and will come home to heaven to be with me. I desire you would walk in this time in great humility that I need not humble you further. I desire you would serve those most in need of service, the aged, the weak and infirm, the fatherless and widows. This has always been my heart. In serving, you will find your reward, meaning it's more blessed to give than receive, and you will walk as I desire. Many around you are in need of me. It is my greatest desire that you would tell others of me. Share with them what I have done for you, the peace I give, the provision I bring. Tell them who I am, for I am a great king. I am the greatest of all kings, and I desire they would know me. I desire they would come to me and spend eternity with me as my child. Tell them. Listeners would do well to note when the Lord said, you will be preoccupied with other things. What do you see now? Distraction after distraction after distraction. You know, the Lord has been merciful up to this point, giving us time to see these things, even as they're smacking us in the face. Many don't even realize that the persecution has already begun in many ways. And there are laws waiting in the wings for vote. 
If they can do it over presenting COVID test results when attending a family dinner for Thanksgiving or Christmas, what makes people think they won't do it when there is a separation of the have and the have-nots, or believers and non-believers? See the spirit of lawless conditioning at play? That is so true. One distraction after another. I don't think I've ever seen a time when there was more distractions than now. There's always been some. We've talked about this very thing, trying to finish a message with one distraction after another. You and I have talked about this a lot of times. You know, something else that is consistent in the Lord's messages to us, both through you and I, is he tells us what to do. He doesn't just say, hey, this is coming, get ready, but he tells us how to get ready. And that's his mercy. Uh, October 28th, 2020, he gave us a message called the time of Esau. From time to time, the Lord gives me glimpses of what is coming to the earth so I can warn others. And I was thinking about, you know, our world in my quiet time with the Lord early that morning. And I began to sense strongly the season that we'd entered. Impressions began coming rapidly and I began seeing scenes in the spirit and I began typing what I was seeing. I felt a deep sense of sadness rise up in my spirit with these scenes. The sadness started days before and I'd wondered why it was there. A time of great darkness and much lack is at our doorsteps. A time so desperate, unlike anything we have experienced here in America. A time of no jobs, no entertainment, and no joy. The closest I can think of to compare it to is the Great Depression, but even in the Great Depression, there was celebration, you know, here and there. In this dark time, I see none of that. I am shown that he has arranged for all else to be taken away, so we have only him to focus on. It is his mercy, but it will feel like anything but mercy. I saw cold in this. I saw bone-chilling cold. No softly lit lamps, no warm hearths and quilts to keep us warm. I saw flavored water instead of hearty stew to eat in the cold. I saw very little light, and what was there was very dim, and the spiritual light was the same. I saw people sitting still in their houses. I still remember that. They They would sit around. They would just kind of, they wouldn't even look very much at each other. They were just sitting there shivering. They were sitting there like they were waiting for something, and I could see desperation on their faces. They didn't seem to be moving around or going anyplace, but I wasn't shown why. I didn't know if it was because they were cold or if they were being held prisoner. And then I realized I didn't see any children. I did not see a single person under the age of 20 in those scenes. Where did the children go? Why was no one smiling? There was not a single smile in any of the scenes. And I wondered if the bride had been taken out, and I think maybe she had. And another thing that I want to mention before I read the rest of this is I was shown last year that the people who refused to take the mark of the beast, and you cannot take but come back from the mark of the beast, you can't take it and then repent. That's one thing the Bible makes very clear. You cannot repent of that. I know there are people out there teaching you can. You cannot, not from that, because you have to deny Jesus to take that. And in this time, That's the death sentence for your soul. So know that so you can make your decision now which way you're going to go. I was shown last year that the people who refuse to take the mark, if they have minor children, they're going to take their minor children away and say, well, you can't provide for them now, so we're going to take custody of your children. So that could possibly have to do with this vision. I don't know. I saw violence, raping, and pillaging. Okay, that's a time of lawlessness we're talking about. When people already had nothing. And I saw that there were still a few people who had wealth, And I saw them guarding it very jealously because it was their God. And they were afraid of nothing more than losing their wealth. I saw parents eating the last of the food in their kitchens. But I saw starving children sleeping in their beds when they were eating. So it's possible that some people still had children. The few pets I saw were suffering horribly and nearly dead of starvation. Everybody that I saw in in this particular vision was starving to death. It was a very dark time. I saw people walking the roads looking for anything, anywhere to eat, but I see military trucks telling them to go back to their houses. And then I saw a smile, an evil one, one of those, either you obey or I will kill you kind of smiles. And I saw that some of the people lived in the woods because they had no houses. They did not have the money to keep their houses. I saw no television newscast. There didn't seem to be any television programming at all. And I don't know if that was because there was no electricity or, I don't know, maybe somebody blew up Hollywood. I don't know. But maybe that was why the lights were so dim. I could only hear quiet. And there was no government. What happened to our government? I could not see the Capitol. 
if you've, if you've ever had a vision, you can look around in the visions, not all of them, but some of them you can look around and look for other things and there, you can either see them or not see them. And I wondered if our country had been attacked and taken over by communists, because that was what the atmosphere felt like. Very heavy, very oppressive, very forced. Like we had been forced into a situation and all hope was gone. I tried to see Hollywood and all I could see was that there were no movies being made. Closer to home, I could also see there were no sports being played, not even high school or college. But I could not see why. I couldn't even see any school. I saw cold despair and hopelessness. Nobody was talking about the future. Nobody was smiling. America was no longer the land of hope and dreams. It had become the land of desperation. I saw a few people trying to talk quietly to the suffering about the Lord, but people were very angry at God. They were blaming him for everything. Whenever anything goes wrong, everybody wants to put the rap on God, but they don't turn to him until it goes wrong. That's hardly fair. They were blaming him for everything. The fact that they were trying to talk quietly makes, made me think that witnessing had been outlawed. I did not see anyone sitting and reading Bibles and the churches were all shuttered. I saw a few of the younger men getting fed up with the situation and saying, I'm going to join the army. At least there I can eat. And their wives and families were begging them not to, saying it was a death sentence. And I was shown this is the time of Esau, a time when many will trade their souls for a bowl of soup. This is the time when everyone will literally choose between flesh and spirit. Feed your flesh or preserve your soul. And in that time, when the mark comes out, I hear people Satan has lied to saying, obviously, there is no God since this is happening. I'm going to go get some food. You know, when you do that, that means food has become your God. That is the silent question that will be posed to each of us when the mark of the beast is introduced. Tell my people, daughter, tell my people I am their only hope. Tell them to draw near to me now so they will be spared from what you are seeing. It is those who refuse me who will suffer this fate. Those who refuse me and refuse my correction will be corrected by much harsher measures as I raise up enemies against every wicked nation that does not acknowledge me as the one true God, for I will give their lands into the hands of the enemies. For anyone who doesn't know, Esau was the rebellious brother of Jacob, and Esau traded his birthright, his right to inherit, which was a double portion since he was the oldest, for a bowl of soup right after their father Isaac left this world. Wow. You know, Glenda, that is precisely why people should not love their money and hoard while many are in need, because if they're doing that now, what are they going to do when everything gets turned digital and they say you have to take the mark to access it? Or take the mark to participate in the quote-unquote new normal. How many people will trade their soul to do other unsavory deeds? Or what about just to eat, like you were just mentioning? A lot more than we want to think about. And many, many will. Many people won't believe that it's really the mark when it's introduced as a means to a more harmonious society. And that unbelief is the path to hell. There is no turning back once you take the mark. So be sure you know what the mark is. Let's look at how the word defines it. Revelation 13, 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Okay, so the mark has to be given either in the right hand or in your forehead. Verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay, so it has to be in your right hand or your forehead. And it gives you the right to buy or sell, and you cannot buy or sell without it. Verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. Six, six, six. So the mark will be given in the right hand or the forehead. It gives you the right to buy or sell. And it will either be the name of the beast, and we don't know yet who the beast or what the beast is, or it will be the number 666. It has to meet those three criteria or it is not the mark. A lot of people said, oh, the, you know, the current jab is the mark. No, it isn't because you don't get it in the right hand or the forehead, number one. So that right there disqualifies it. However, if they come out with, say, a little tattoo or a little imprint mark on you that does give you the right to buy or sell because you've had that, then that could be the mark. Which we have to have it to buy or sell. 
which we've talked about, and I've mentioned the patent when we uh, talked about the white horse riding. Oh, that's right. Yep. And yes, you did. I remember that. That was pretty shocking. And that it was tied yeah. to a cryptocurrency. So everything up until now has been the trading wheels for that. Yeah, the the currency, all our money is going to go digital. It's eventually going to go digital all over the world. And what that does is, you know, and I personally think they'll just do it in the night, one night that we won't be given any advance notice. But even if you could withdraw your cash, you won't be able to spend it because they'll say, OK, it has to be digital or you can't buy anything. When they do that, whatever you have in the bank is gone and you have no money and you will have to have the mark in order to get paid with digital currency because all the jobs will go to digital pay. They're going to cause everyone to have to choose all over the world to either take the mark or not take the mark. And I think it's going to be tied to wealth and being able to eat. It will be hardest to resist the mark for those who have only known wealth because they will not know what else to do in the absence of money unless they've been seeking the Lord about it. I'm not saying it's easy to lose whatever you have in the bank. It's not. Whether it's $10 or $10 million, it's yours and you have the right to it. But that is what's coming. I think it's a lot easier to face all this if you realize one thing up front. We're not getting out of here alive. Starving is just one way to die, and there are worse ways, in my opinion. It's true. And, you know, I just read two separate articles recently, Glenda, within a matter of a week. And I think I shared one of them with you, that Israel has now created a new AI bank that is based on a digital currency, but also that now Mexico is doing the same. I just read that China got the green light for the digital yuan. The tech company Tencent is involved with both instances. When you take the number 10, it is a one zero. It's binary. Coincidence? You know, this is all at a time while Sweden is rolling out a chip for passports. You could do a search to find out that any of this is true. The creator of the chip just said last week you cannot stop the chip from coming, and folks are already gleefully willing to line up and take it as a matter of convenience. What makes people think that they won't combine the passport with a currency? If you think about it, the passport is fixing to be tied to social credit when they reset everything, so that only those who are quote-unquote compliant will have access. So, you know, I say again, what links will folks go to when it gets rough, like I was just saying, and you can't access your funds? How will those around them act who wouldn't listen? How many will take their lives? You see, this is why you strongly need to consider where your faith is and ask the Lord for more if you feel it's lacking. If people think that this won't come here and to other nations, they are sadly and sorely mistaken. It's not a question of if, but when. This is a worldwide agenda, and it has been planned, and it was foretold in God's word. Eventually, it won't be a regional currency. It's going to be one single currency for the entire world just as everything else has been being rolled out over the last few years for the entire world. The word is very clear on what will happen to those who take that mark or worship the beast. You know, I'm not going to go into all that right at this moment, but Revelation 16 lays out the judgment that comes to all who take the mark or worship the beast. And Ray, you mentioned that company having the number 10. The number 10 is the number for testing. Anytime you start seeing a lot of 10s, Look for what you're being tested on. I learned this from my friend Cheryl, the numbers lady, that eventually is going to be on the podcast whenever the Lord frees her up and she can. And how you can remember that the 10 is there were 10 plagues in Egypt. There were, t- there were 10 commandments. There were 10 virgins in the parable and on and on. Let's keep in mind that the name of the beast or his number could be hidden in a scannable code, etc. So we may not be able to tell that's what it is. I'm sure it's not going to be labeled, you know, the mark of the beast, Okay. They sure have not been that upfront about anything else they've done. No, they haven't. And this is interesting considering they are tying it to a digital currency where it's binary and one is active and zero is off. You know, imagine that being a test in and of itself. You know, just today I saw a video of a woman in Argentina who wasn't allowed to get money out of her ATM because she didn't have a passport. And there was another similar story out of uh, Italy. These ladies or these people, they were outside. They weren't even in the bank. And they said, nope, you don't have a passport. You can't get your money out of the ATM. So take that and envision it that once they tie you to an implantable chip that they control if you're not in compliance with whatever they set forth. You know, years ago, um, I saw something from Prophet Tom Deckard. He had seen uh, people banging on the bank doors and trying to get into the banks. And he had seen on 
the television, something like an economic crash or something like this was years ago. I don't know how old the prophecy is. That makes me think of that. And didn't you send me a link to an article where people were trying to buy food at a McDonald's and it was just at a kiosk and it wouldn't give them, it wouldn't let them buy any food because they had not taken the jab. Yeah, I think that they was. Didn't have a, they didn't it, have some kind of pass that you had to have if you had been vaccinated or something like that. Yeah, I want to say that was in Israel, if I remember correctly. And, you know, the social credit thing, I had heard years ago that was coming out. My son has uh, he has some kind of gift for seeing what's coming in the future. And he told me that years ago. And I'm like, what? He goes, yeah. And he goes, here, watch this movie. And that was back when I still watched television. I watched it and I was like, wow, they could uh, blacklist somebody pretty easily with that. And, yeah, that is what's coming. And because the powers that be controlled those chips, they control you when you get one of those chips. Get used to that idea now, because in communism, it's all about control. Look at China if you want to know what that looks like. So when your currency goes digital, just be aware they can take your money away anytime they feel like it. And that leads us to the next message. This is a message called All is Prepared. I got on February 1st last year. It was late on a Friday night. And I was winding down and, and trying to get my mind to rest from the stress and the chaos from, you know, the ongoing pandemic and all the stuff that was being imposed on us. And my spirit began sensing the future. I saw coming in the not too distant future, a time of great and widespread grief, deep, intense grief. Many of us grieve already because we've just watched democracy in America being crushed and left bleeding in the dirt by a pack of blatantly dishonest thieves. But what I saw coming is the type of grief you feel when someone you really love has just died. It is a terrible and intense grief. What is it I see coming, Lord? What could cause millions of people to grieve so deeply at the same time? And I see there's fear along with the grief. It may be that, you know, they've just seen their loved ones take the mark or maybe seeing so many killed in persecution. I didn't know what it was. Maybe our lives had become nearly unbearable due to the new laws. I didn't know. Everyone encounters grief sooner or later, but what you see, my daughter, is altogether different. It is weeping and wailing because all that is good has gone from the earth, and those who have denied me have seen me come and take my own from the earth. They mourn because they have realized too late where their eternal destiny will lie. This is why I have urged my children to pray diligently for the lost and for their lost loved ones. Weep and wail, fast and cry out to me for those you love. My children, that I may save them quickly before it is too late. Intercede, declare my word, pray without ceasing, for their souls are precious in my sight, and you will enjoy them here for all eternity if they are saved. You do not realize just how close my return is. All is prepared for your arrival here. I am coming back soon. Matthew twenty five thirteen says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. And I want to read some from Revelation chapter 1, starting in verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive the, his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. That's verse 11. You know, and Glinda, it all comes back down to listening. And what it shows is the consistency in what he's telling us. I agree. He keeps telling us the same things over and over. He's pleading with people to pay attention to the times and to get right. You know, the bottom line is no matter what happens prior to when Jesus comes back to get us, no matter what else is going on in your life, the main thing we must all do is draw nearer to him, nearer to our king and nearer to his holy word. I saw a meme online that said ships don't sink because of the water around them. Ships sink because of the water that gets into them. Don't let the storm raging around you get inside you when this time comes. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He will keep your mind in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. That's Isaiah 26, 3. Those of us who walk with him will be shown mercy. It's the others who should be worried. 
Spend your time seeking him, reading his word, and crying out for the lost among your loved ones and the lost you don't know, for this is his heart. He came to save that which was lost. The Lord has indicated he's going to fire what I call a warning shot prior to the really, really big end time judgments starting. I have been impressed that when he does this warning shot judgment, whatever it is, unbelievers will run to the nearest Christian to find out about our Jesus. This part is a good thing. The lives being lost in the warning shot are a bad thing. We need to be ready to tell them the instant in season and out to give a reason for the hope that is in us. I think it is very important we do not take lightly that we need to prepare for this. When judgments are falling, hearts will change. Isaiah 26, 9, the second part says, when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. And we need to be ready to witness to the lost around us. We should be doing that at all times anyway. Amen. And speaking of warning shots, there was just a story I read recently coming out of Australia where it was reported there were shortages because they will not allow truckers to deliver food and goods because they are not job compliant. You know, this is leading to empty store shelves, which is occurring all over the world. You know, just looking through the headlines, you see titles such as food industry experts are warning us that supplies are going to get even tighter in the weeks to come, or basic services and supply chains around the world are rapidly breaking down. I mean, if you haven't seen it yourself by going to your local store, all you have to do is go on YouTube because, I mean, there's videos all over and they've been occurring since late last year. And there's many people, not just newscasts, but there's many people walking into stores and recording it. And I've seen videos out of Australia. I have seen videos out of the UK and all over the United States. And, you know, some are sitting there dismissing it saying, well, it hasn't come near me yet. It's like, that doesn't mean it won't. You just might live in an area where it's not as prevalent right now, but Rest assured, it's yeah. coming. It's coming because it's all part of the plan. And that makes me think of a vision I had last year on April 7th that I called the vision of the dark storm in the store. This was freaky. I was trying to lose weight then. And I, was, I would do this little visualization exercise because I strongly believe if you can't see it, you can't be it. And I believe that's biblical. And so I was imagining walking into the store and, you know, having lost weight because I didn't ever go anyplace else. And... So when I imagined walking into the store, a vision started and the store was pitch black. And I said, Lord, why is it dark in the store? It was, and then it was storming inside the store. And we all know what that vision means. That's not good. Lack of food or sky high prices or both. I did not want to be in that dark store for even one minute. And this is my local grocery store. I could not see anything when I looked upward. And I saw dark clouds and heard the thunder. I couldn't see anything around me in the dark store. So I looked up and I saw dark clouds and I heard the thunder. There was no place to hide from this storm. No place. And on the night of April 10th, I began the same visualization process. And I was once again entering the store and there was that awful darkness looming. And then I was jolted out by a loud crashing noise. It sounded like when two cars hit head on on the highway at real high speed. And I think that it might be about the unprecedented economic crash, but I don't know. So I looked up what a storm was, and a storm is a big disturbance in the status quo of the atmosphere. And things like hail or heavy rain may fall on you during a storm, and the wind may blow very hard at the same time, sometimes from more than one direction. In severe cases, tornadoes may destroy you or your home or your property or the people you love. We don't always see storms coming. Sometimes they sneak up on us. The storm I saw in the grocery store was so pitch black, I could not see anything in front of me. I saw no other people. I saw no checkout stands. And it may be because there was no food in there, so there was no need for a checkout stand. It was empty. And I saw only darkness. And it made me think that maybe the Antichrist had risen and the mark had come out. And maybe the storm was the fact that we had to struggle to get any kind of food at all. So I think it might possibly be, but I'm not sure, related to the vision of the droughted wheat that was also that month. In fact, the vision of the drowned wheat was the next day after that. And then two weeks after that, I had the vision of the leopard that was poised above the U.S. being ready to attack. There were several in a row. You know, yeah, and Glinda, speaking of the dark store, um, I had seen a video, and I actually posted this on my blog. I can't remember what blog it was under, but it was a video of a drugstore somewhere in America where they, and it, and it might be in California, I'm not sure where it is, but they were putting readers, they were putting the food behind doors 
but they had readers on them, like RFID readers. Because they had paste, they showed you, they had like oh, decals. No, they had decals on where it would normally be transparent glass, like for the refrigerated section. Mm-hmm. And and the guy was pointing out, like, what are these readers? Why do these? Why are these here? And he was pointing out the doors had locks on them. Wow. So. So you have to have a chip to be able to get open the doors and get anything out to go pay for it. Yeah. And, you know, you're going to find video. You aren't going to find videos like this on YouTube most of the time. These th- they might be. I haven't looked. I really don't use YouTube because YouTube likes to block everything. But um, Brideon is where you want to look if you want to look through what's really going on. Because you'll see some of the wildest stuff that you didn't even think was going on. But it's there. And, and before we forget, let's mention Brideon. I have a new channel on Brideon. Yeah. Uh, and Ray also has a channel on Brideon. I'm going to still be on YouTube for a time, but I am definitely going to be probably eventually just on Bridie on at some point because YouTube is censoring. Yeah, there's been videos coming out that they're uh, censoring Christian material, especially those who talk about the end times. And, you know, this is all everything that you mentioned, all the stuff I've mentioned about the RFID and the, the locking doors at the drugstore and what you just read about the dark store vision. You know, that's all while we're hearing the war drums beating louder and louder. You know, yeah, not- I heard I heard the chariots of war months ago back in the summer, I believe it was first time I'd heard them. Yeah. And none of these are even including the warning shot. But really, all of them should serve as warnings that the time is upon us. I mean, it's now. Jesus yes. used Jesus used the parable of the fig tree to illustrate how to know how the time was at hand and to keep watch. It's for this reason we're hammering these points home and sharing these messages and visions. And I'd like to mention to anyone who is new to the audience to check out a podcast that uh, Glinda and I did about the wedding garments back in April of last year, because in that podcast, we shared a lot of revelation with the listeners on what the Lord desires of his people, not to be caught without the oil in their lamps and not to be caught slumbering. If folks go back through the archives, the title of that episode was called Put On Your Wedding Garments. It's also a good refresher for those who would like to go back and listen to it anyway, but You know, Revelation 16, verse 15 says, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And what that means is, blessed is he who watches means you're not sleeping, you're not slumbering in the late hour, you're keeping your garments right, you're living right, like we were covering much earlier in this podcast, because you don't want to be caught naked and you don't want to be caught asleep. You don't want to be found shameful like the ten foolish virgins. No, and you know, when he says I'm coming as a thief, I don't know if any of y'all have ever been robbed. I've had somebody break into my house and rob me before. They've come and gone and you don't even know it's happened yet until you start seeing things missing. And as for wedding garments, in the Jewish wedding, when a couple became betrothed, the only person who knew the day and the hour that the marriage would take place was the father of the groom. And, And from the betrothal on, the bride and the groom both had to be ready at all times in case the father suddenly said, okay, this is it right now. They had to be dressed for the wedding and ready every single day. And then one night the father would wake up the groom and he would say, okay, go get your bride. This is it. And he would jump up and he would go get the bride. Put on your wedding garments is in the JPH radio archives. It's dated April 19th, 2021. Is it also in your archives, Ray, where people can find it? I don't think that the audio podcast is in mine because we did that on your show before I had started my podcast. But I'm going to be posting all the messages for both part one and two. And I'll link to uh, the the podcast and the uh, related messages where listeners will be able to read and find them. Oh, good. You know, it's unsettling to know that our our nation, America, has passed the point of no return to receive mercy. And this is what the Lord has let us know, what he has let many know, not just us. Now Now there is only judgment. But those who live in America can still have mercy if they are willing to turn to him, to give him their hearts and do their best to live for him. There is no other safe place, y'all. And these things we're talking about are not in some distant future. They are starting to happen now. All you have to do is look to see them. Please hear me on this. This is no time for playing. This is real. I desperately wish we did have more time. There is so much more I wanted to do. But that time is almost up, the time that's left. Anyone can see the writing on the wall. If they will look even a little bit, the signs are there. You know, Frank Bartleman lived in the time of the Azusa Street Revival. He was an eyewitness to what happened there, a revivalist preacher. 
He was a preacher in that time that was so impoverished because he stopped working to do the Lord's work years before that he had to believe the Lord even when he needed a fountain pen to write what the Lord was saying. And God provided it too. A friend of his found a fountain pen, and since he already had one, he gave the one he found to Frank. I've been reading the first book in the Frank Bartleman collection, which is a collection of five of his books about revival. Frank Bartleman also wrote many, many tracks. The Lord would often give him a new track when he prayed and interceded for a whole night or for hours on end. They actually prayed the whole Azusa Street revival in. That entire revival was birthed in prayer. He experienced travailing in the spirit and also wrote about that. In one of his tracks entitled The Last Call, he wrote something that sounds like it was written for now, not then. And now, once more, at the very end of the age, God calls. The last call, the midnight cry, is now upon us, sounding clearly in our ears. God will give this one more chance, the last, a final call, a worldwide revival, then judgment upon the whole world. That worldwide revival did not happen back in 1906. It is starting to happen now. The lost are dying and going to hell every day, y'all. And God's people who have refused to forgive also are. People whose lives are not right with the Lord. I don't want a single one of y'all perish and go to that terrible place. I'm going to share one last message. It's called, Are You Ready? My children, make no mistake. The times about you are dire. You will see things this year you never thought to see that will cause you much grief. Remember, I bore your grief for you if the burden is too much. Are you ready for what lies just ahead? Are you ready to see displays of my mighty power like nothing before it? For I will spare nothing to bring unbelievers to the cross in this last bid to win their souls. So many of my children pray to see my power. But have you considered what my power looks like? Windstorms like nothing before them, earthquakes that shake the whole world, fire and brimstone raining down upon you. Are you ready? When these things begin, cling tightly to your most holy faith. When the world shakes and men run and scream in fear, you need not fear who walk with me, for I will take you quickly if it is your time. If it is not your time, you have been assigned to witness to others of me. You live in dire times, my precious ones, and all of heaven watches to see how you will answer when you are asked about the one in whom you believe. Are you ready to proclaim my name, even if it costs you everything? The last revival is starting up. 2 Timothy 4.2 says, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all longsuffering and doctrine. And 2 Peter, starting in 3.15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. 16. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. As the word says, be ready in and out of season. In this season, we need to be ready to witness to those who will be looking for answers. The answer is in our Lord Jesus, not the world. We are the testimony of his mercy. We are the testimony of his love. I hope this podcast has given you a lot to think about. Ray and I have worked very intensely on this, pulling together what we felt were the most pertinent words, dreams, and visions to help you to get a more complete picture, complete with biblical references of what the Lord is telling us is coming. Lots of interference today, so that should tell you the enemy is trying to mess with getting these messages. We've been fighting, just trying to record with the static and everything coming in. Our hope is simply that you will take the warning seriously and that you will draw closer to our King so that we will see you all in heaven. I'm doing my best, and I know Ray is doing his best to be sure we show up there too. We hope and pray that you got a lot out of this. Ray, thank you so much for coming on to share the dreams the Lord has given you as well as your insight. Would you like to tell the listeners where they can contact you and find your podcast? Sure. Well, listeners may find my blog at www.innocenceredeemed.blog, and there is a contact form under the About section. And as far as the podcast, they can find that on various platforms under Innocence Redeemed, which I also have linked up on my blog under the podcast tab. I highly recommend subscribing to Ray's podcast. It is excellent. I listen to it myself. Did you have anything else you wanted to add in in closing, Ray? 
I just like to stress to everyone that part of the reason why we're hammering these points home so hard is so that it brings a conviction about in regards to how deep your faith is rooted in Jesus. You know, when war comes, it's going to be the pretext in bringing on the Antichrist. And like I said earlier, everything up until now has been training wheels for that. Amen to that. And so how have they succeeded in getting this far? Well, simply put, they use fear. What do you hear in almost every single reason for a change? It's constant to keep you safe, to keep you safe. And we are still not safe. No, exactly. But that's always how it's justified. It's always, oh, just do this one more thing. Do this one more thing. And it never ends. And we allow it. <laughs> you know, when did we as a society begin wearing adult pampers and need people in control to continually look out for us who clearly don't have our best interests at hand? I mean, I'm not saying this to be offensive, but just think about it for a moment, how asinine it is. On one hand, we don't want someone telling us what to do, but then on the other hand, we allow it selectively instead of using discernment. We look more to corrupt men to protect us than we look to Jesus. You know, that is a real problem where we need to repent and reconsider who our trust really should be in. I'm just saying, we're safe in Jesus. Amen. I love that. I agree. We are not little babies. We are intelligent, thinking adults who can reason whether something is good or bad for us. Well, it means most can. I love how you said that. We look more to corrupt men to protect us than we look to Jesus. That is exactly what we see happening. Well, it's true. And we need to break that conditioning. You know, fear is an inhibitor. It's a spiritual inhibitor. It shuts you down. It generates unbelief. And when you're in a faith walk, you have to drive that out. You know, when Peter took his eyes off Jesus, he began to sink out of fear. So when folks are in constant fear, those pulling the strings can usher in control of an unsuspecting populace. You know, if you succumb to that fear, especially when you're in desperation, which is what has and will continue to present, as we've already laid out with the messages today, and your faith is not rooted in Jesus Christ, who will you be willing to serve? What will you be willing to do that you otherwise wouldn't do? You know, we touched on this earlier. If you fear men, do you have a healthy fear of God? In Matthew 10, verse 28, Jesus said, And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. You know, fear has been present in everything up to this point. And just take a step back and observe how many have fallen into that trap. I see it in other customers when I take a trip to my local grocery store just to pick up a few items. If they and they being the media and others, can make folks so fearful so as to wear a face diaper and jump back from others, what else can they make you do? You know, we're not marionettes. We're God's creation. And you know, I want to be clear, just for a second, I'm not talking about those who have to, as a means to work, wear a mask. Although, with passports, it will come to a choice eventually. No, what I'm talking about is those who willingly do it, because they're fearful. And those in fear are who the evil one targets and has control over. That's the conditioning, and it needs to be broken before the mark is brought onto the scene and blindly taken out of fear of lack or whatever else is cooked up. You know, there's a saying in some Christian circles, today the mask, tomorrow the mark. Don't be that person. Don't be the person who gives up their birthright for a bowl of lentils, like Linda illustrated earlier when she read the message about the time of Esau. Choose now, and choose wisely. Your eternity depends on it. Your salvation depends on it. You know, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25 says, The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. You know, this is coming down to the wire now. And I'm going to make one last point here in conclusion. When this all started, a relative in my extended family called me out of concern about COVID. You know, oh, I, oh Ray, I really, I, I really wish you would just wear a mask. I really wish. And I said, and I said, no, no, I'm not going to live in fear. In the coming storm, Faith in our Lord Jesus is what's going to carry us through. Not faith in a man, not faith in a mask, not faith in a test, not faith in a jab, not faith in your money, and not faith in a mark. That should now be evident to everyone with eyes to see and ears to hear. Amen. Well said. And for anyone who needs to know this, whenever fear begins attacking me, I begin quoting Psalm 23 and Psalm 91 out loud. I do it daily if I'm under heavy attacks from fear. And if fear attacks me during the day, say when I'm working, I say, I will fear no evil. God's word is how you overwrite fear and leave it behind you, but you must be consistent with it. Amen. And ladies and gentlemen, please remember, Jesus loves you. 
He desires that none should perish but only repent and seek him. Seek him wholeheartedly. He's being patient for your sake, not because he's slow about keeping promises, but he has put on my heart that the time for repentance being poured out is getting shorter. Call on him while you still have the chance. I have seen the Lord act in so many ways in my own life, and if I could leave you with one thing, it is that I would desire all of you would experience and know his love, and even then you still wouldn't be able to comprehend it. Amen. The Lord has told us to survive even a portion of what is coming in order to win more souls is going to take walking very closely with him and obeying him. He will show us mercy, whatever comes. If we are truly his, which means if he looks at us and he sees a reflection of himself, does he see that when he looks at you? Or is there some stuff you really need to be working on and letting go of? This is not a time to play. This is the real deal. The judgments are rolling out, and this is going to be an ugly time. That war and the invasion of America could start any day or any night. Be found abiding in the vine. Be found in him, and whatever happens, he will be with you, and he will guide you. Amen, Glenda. I agree. And, you know, it's this is a perfect opportunity to tell uh, everybody how they can get saved, I, I believe, because, you know, we're running out of time, and the Lord is pleading with his people to come near. You know, Revelation 3, verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. And going on in Revelation 3, verse 21, To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Let us also remember 2 Timothy 2, verse 12 through 13. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. You know, the Bible says in Acts chapter 16, in verse 30 and 31, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. And Jesus is the only name that you can be saved through. He is the only one that can save you from the fires of hell, okay? He is it. That's it. He is the only one. And the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. So there's three things there. You want to you want to believe you want to ask Jesus to come into your life. You want him to submit your life to him, basically, and say Jesus is Lord and believe that God did raise him from the dead, which, by the way, is in the history books, in case you don't know that uh, Josephus wrote about it. He was one. I think there were others, but he actually wrote about that. He was a historian in that time. Okay, so I'm going to just say a little short prayer now. And if you say this prayer after me, then God will accept you into the family of, of his children. And you will be saved if you believe in your heart that he sent Jesus to die for our sins. And he raised him from the dead after he was crucified. Okay. Lord Jesus, I know that I have sinned and disappointed you. And I've never really wanted to follow you before. Or I've followed you before and I've fallen away. And I ask right now that you would come into my heart and clean up my life for me and help me to understand how to follow you. Help me to understand your word because I don't want to be left behind when the other people are taken from the earth and all the bad things are happening. I want to go with you. And I know that you can take me out of here and no one else can. And so I declare that Jesus is my Lord. I do believe that he died on the cross for my sins and that you raised him from the dead. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, welcome to the worldwide family of God. You are now a Christian. And you can read the Bible and God will speak to you. You can find a really good church that preaches the truth of the word of God, that doesn't pretend that sin doesn't exist anymore. And you can learn more and more about your new life. You have nothing to lose by trying Jesus. He's real, y'all. He's real. We hope you've enjoyed this end time series. We may from time to time release an end times update if the Lord gives us more to share. Leave us a comment and tell us what you thought about it, what you liked, what you didn't like. Jesus bless you. Thanks for listening. Y'all have a great week. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Just Praise Him Radio. You can contact me by mail at my new address, JPH Inc., 
Glenda Lomax, P.O. Box 60, Glencoe, Arkansas 72539, or by email at jphtoday at gmail.com. JPH is not affiliated with any nonprofit organization, church, or denomination. Have you heard? The 2016 and 2017 messages have been published in book form. Even those who do not profess a belief in God can see something is amiss in the world around us. What is coming for our world in these last days? What does the Lord want us doing while we're waiting for His glorious reappearance? Time of Reckoning and Soon It Will Be Night each contain approximately 200 prophetic messages and visions from the throne room of God telling what is coming to America and the world in these end times. The Lord has always warned nations when they were headed for destruction. He has always warned His own people. Are we also being warned? Get your copy of Time of Reckoning and Soon It Will Be Night, available now on Amazon.com. What is in store for the once great and mighty nation of America in these end times? What is the living God saying to the people of America now? What could possibly be in store for a nation that once trusted in God, but has changed its path from following in the living God's ways to now removing Him from everything and walking the other way? In the book, No Longer Mind, you will find all the messages to America collected in one place in chronological order. No Longer Mind, Messages to an Unrepentant Nation is now available in print at wingsofprophecy.com in the bookstore tab. Get your copy of No Longer Mind today. If you ask anyone you know what the most difficult experience of their life has been, many will answer about a time of betrayal. All those called to walk the narrow path will, at some point, encounter Judas. How will you respond? Do you know how to recognize Judas when he shows up in your life? Can you keep Judas from bringing destruction to your life and ministry? How can you minimize what Judas cost you? Can you pass the test of absolute betrayal? Get your copy of The Judas Test, available in print and new audiobook. The Judas Test by Glenda Lomax, available now on Amazon.com. Sold out for 30 pieces of silver? In Exodus 21:32, it is the price of a dead slave. In Leviticus 27, 2-7, it is the price of a live one. Jesus was sold for the price of a bondservant. Precious Jesus, the Son of God the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings? Why did Judas sell his friend out so cheap? 